<laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> so how have you been through all this? Uh, I've been hanging in there, you know. I've been um, surprisingly uh, positive about a lot that's been going on. Because normally, if um, normally I feel like I'm kind of pessimistic about a lot of stuff, but like I feel like things are going a lot better than than they could be going. Like uh, the free play community is still going strong and keeping us afloat, and we've still been able to to do all this really cool stuff that. I was I didn't even know that we were going to be able to do it first because I was worried about our um, our being an arcade and not being able to sell stuff mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. And then we got to. Yeah. And just like the overwhelming flood of support and like just people being, um, you know, just like building the community back up and it just really shows how uh, how much everybody here is really connected. Yeah, and, it, you know? and it's it's definitely not just me. Like I'm putting a lot of time and effort into this for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it wasn't for people like like the owls, Jerry, Ian, our other producer, um, Ray mm -hmm. Upshaw, who donated almost all of this equipment that you don't see because it's a green screen, but he donated it. Oh, that's um, amazing. Yeah, like they hooked me up in literally no warning. It's just like the world ended right then. And uh, if you can set me up in this empty room, because the VR, VR room, or it was, um, then we can keep going. And they did, and we have. And uh, my duty was to just sort of stick to it. They say the music got a little loud. I can, I can dip it a little. It's just a, a more lively track from Retrospect Radio. There we go. Is that better? Uh, who was that? Uncle Yosh. Okay. So, um, you have been volunteering. You're, you're of course, uh, one of Free Play Richardson's and one of Free Play in general's best bartenders. Um, you've been volunteering to do to-go orders and man the phones. How's that been? Uh, I've really been enjoying it. You know, it's just really nice to be able to get back into some sort of routine. I get to leave my house and I get to go to work and it's actually given me some sense of normalcy and purpose and yeah. keeps me from going crazy in my house and I'm just so thankful to be able to be a part of things uh, every time I come in I'm just like I'm just really happy to be here uh, I'm really happy to see all those faces um, that we know and love uh, so I've really been enjoying my time out there like yeah. this weekend uh, it kind of slowed down a little bit but we're also really optimistic and we're reevaluating for this upcoming weekend uh, to see what we're going to be doing. And I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. As well. No, no news on if we will be open this weekend, if we are open this weekend, free play Richardson for to go, then I'm assuming you and I will be involved in that uh, on a volunteer basis. Um, I just I just killed the music because you're you're getting a little low and I've already maxed out your volume. So if your if your microphone is fading away from from your actual like vocal cords, then then get it closer. But other than that, I have you maxed out and no music. Um, so like so many of us, you have a side hustle going just because um, money has to be made and rent has to be paid. In fact, it's probably due today. Uh, I know I had to pay my rent regardless of paycheck. Um, Whoa, you sound even worse now. <laughs> Where you at? I can't drop the no music, so Carissa, are you there? Yeah, can you not hear me? You're getting lower and lower and lower and lower. I'm trying this one headphones to see if maybe um maybe that could help. I'm not very technologically savvy. I understand. Like I said, for whatever reason, it's not working on my headphones on my computer where I would have preferred to. Um... How did you call into the show previously when we were working? When we were working, I was just doing it on my phone. But as you recall, uh, when I have it on my phone, for whatever reason, I can't get you guys off speakerphone. Okay, but you were doing you were doing. The... Oh my god, I figured it out. I did it, Chris. I did it. I can hear you. I took it off speaker. I'm there you go. That's it. No speaker. No speakerphone. That's the problem. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I fixed it, guys. Thank you so much for for. Uh putting up with me and no, being don't so worry patient about it. with me. Thank you for joining us. I can bring the music I'm back now. I'm happy to be here. Yes. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about that side hustle. What you got for us, Carissa? What have you... Okay. 
Uh, so I'm really excited. It's really cool because the amount of feedback that I've had so far and the amount of responses that I've had have just been so not not really overwhelming like physically like I can definitely keep up with like what people are asking of me uh -huh. but it's just the over uh the emotional response that I'm getting like from all these people like everyone is being so supportive uh, I don't know how many people know I'm sure they've seen me drawing behind the bar if you've ever been to free play Denton especially that first year we were open if you ever saw the little post-it note doodles <clears throat> hiding up around the bar like I don't really shy away from the fact that I love art um, but the fact that I've been doing it and um, been producing stuff, I've actually taken my art to different um, events and I've been able to participate. There was an event at, a, uh, what was it called? Gas Monkey Live called Skate or Die. I think that was in 2018. One of my favorite games. And <laughs> it was really cool. So they had set up like this whole skating area and they had a bunch of different artists um, uh, set around the venue. And then Bowling for Soup came and played at the end of the night. And you know, I... about three out of every mm -hmm. ten conventions I go to in my life, Bowling for Soup has been playing. And that makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. All the, the more times I get to see them, the better. Yes. They... Oh man, they just make me so happy. And the fact that I could see them after I got to go to this event and sling my merch. Um, they, they have literally been... played my home arcade before. You're kidding. Not kidding at all. I saw them I... with a crowd of zero. It was just me. <sighs> there, there's like there's like three others maybe uh, at what Gameworks and Grapevine back in the day. Did before... it, get lost? it got lost in the mail, right? That's what happened? What? My invite got lost in the mail, right? I think you were like... Two years old. You're 23 now, so. I'm 25. I'm trying to think, it was 99, maybe. So, however old you were then, do my math. I'm not very good at it. So you're like oh, three. Yeah. yeah, but they played That's live. Five. It was it was before they were signed a signed you know major record label. They were doing That's songs. That's so even cooler. They were doing songs like Sucker Punch. I don't know if you've ever. Well, you've seen them many times apparently. Uh, you know how Chris um, always flips the his pick and grabs yes, it. Yes, he does that so much. Right. Well, he was doing it back then, except he was just learning to do it, so he was terrible at it. So he had like a line oh, of like, no. he had a line of like forty and like more in his pocket. And he's just trying all these flip tricks with the picks, and every single one of them was just hitting the deck. So I, I have, somewhere around here, I have a bunch of Bowling for Soup picks because he was just leaking them all over the place and it was basically just me. That is amazing, and I am so jealous. I'm, I'm, I'm relatively sure you can see a performance live in the in the DFW area of Bowling for Soup. But that's not that's neither here nor there because that's not the links to no, your... We can't do that right now, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I, I need to get the links like up. I just feel like I'm, I'm attached to Bowling for Soup now because I got to sling merch at one of their shows. I feel I'm practically famous, in case you didn't know. Yes. But I keep it on the DL. Well, yeah, if you want to get actual famous, then uh, Michael Beltran was just here. He can he can lead you in the right direction. But what? how do we find your stuff? We're, we're, oh. we, if we want to buy your stuff, where? how do we find it? Because I want to put that on screen okay. for you. So most of my stuff, I've actually, um, I get a lot of followers on Instagram, and so that's where all of it is. I, I was posting everything on my uh, my Snapchat. I had it on my Facebook stories. Um, my, uh, oh, someone someone posted my Instagram in all the right. chat for Uncle me. Uncle Yosh actually. has it. I will I will copy it over and put it on screen oh, for you. Oh, that's really cool. Yes. Uh, so yeah, my. Um, my shop title that I've been going by for the last few years has been Ghost Flesh, um, which is kind of a mixture of the two usernames that I've been using for the last several years, which is Sanguine Ghost and Infected Flesh. And so those are my uh, those are my two big usernames for a long time. And so then I smushed them together, and that's how I have the username that you guys see there. Although when my uh, when my Twitch name was Ghost Flesh. Uh, and I would play uh, Jackbox mm -hmm. uh, with Ray. Mm -hmm. uh, he would always call it Ghost Fish. I can see it. I can see it. If you if yeah, you miss that three there, then yeah, it looks yeah. like Ghost Fish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I would make my username Fishbones. Right. And Ray Upshaw is not the counting pro, as we saw yesterday. His math hasn't always 
the best. Oh, no? Yes, yes. But he did well. He did well. He made it to Final Jeopardy, unlike some celebrity players we had. Well, it happens to the best of us. Yes, you know? yes. Like. So how long have you been doing art? Gosh, I mean, just... if we're being honest, I've always done it. Um, I never considered myself formally trained, except I I was. Like, that that's cheating. In my uh, junior high, I, the high school I went to, Richardson High School, I'm sure plenty of you are familiar with. It's literally right up the street. Yes, um, I went to the sister high school, Lake Highlands. They are built exactly the same, except we did not get <laughs> featured in any Pearl Jam songs. Oh, oh yeah, I know. Oh, I actually was in the class that... That one Pearl Jam song, is it that Jeremy, that song that that happened in? And I used to tell ghost stories to the freshmen and freak them out. I bet. You don't even have to tell them. You just sort of play the song. <laughs> right? Um, so, yeah, I, I went to Richardson, and so I also went to West Junior High, and West Junior High has an art magnet. And so I was in the art magnet there, and so I got a lot of actual formal training in that class without realizing it. And so by the time I got into my college art history class, I was like, I already know all of this. Like, I know what hatching is, I know cross hatching, I know about stippling, I know what you're talking about when you are talking about a chiaroscuro and the types of shading. And I was like, oh shoot, I have been formally taught. <laughs> <laughs> I took all those classes on it. Funny how that happens. So you've yeah, been- Yeah, and then I- hmm? You've been at it as long as you can remember? Uh, when did oh, you yeah. start, you know, becoming a, a pro or quasi pro, or when did when did you start selling the the merch, selling the art? Well, I didn't start selling my merch until um, a friend of mine told me about this bar in Dallas uh, called Green Elephant, and on Wednesdays um, they do a bunch of different. Like, if you show up early enough and you can find a space you can sell whatever it is that you're peddling. Mm -hmm. So I would get there. My friend Andy showed it to me. Or told me about it. I think it was her. It might not have been. She and I went to, no, it was me and my friend Salam, who many of you also know. Yes. Gosh, it's been so long that I've been going there now. It's crazy. Um, but I would go there and I would sell my merch. And some nights I would go and I wouldn't sell anything. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine because there's only a $5 cover fee to get in the door. And other than that, there, there's no cost to, to put your stuff up. Um, and so I would sell my stuff there. And... Uh, that kind of is what got the ball rolling and made me feel like Because uh, even on the days that I didn't sell anything like the people who were coming up to me were really supportive And they were looking at my stuff and I went in with the mindset that I wasn't really there to make much But I was there to like make connections. I was there to meet new art friends and uh, I met a lot of really interesting people who do a lot of really interesting art there and They also encouraged me to like keep pursuing doing it in other venues um, so that's when I tried out Skate or Die, and I had, um, I had another friend, if you guys, uh, know, in Denton, there was Backyard on Bell, a friend of mine got me a booth to sell merch there, just because I've had so many people who see my art, and they support me, and they think that I could do well, even though I am literally my own worst critic, and I'm constantly being like, I don't know, like, I like my stuff, but would anybody pay for it? That sounds you know? like literally every artist I have ever met. All of them. And I'm sure. I'm so sure. Yes. That doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Because I'm still, like, even the stuff that I'm producing now, uh, this, it's all on, like, super low sale. Like, it's definitely a lot lower prices than I would originally be comfortable selling my art at. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to give everybody an opportunity, like, with the layoff and, and things being, like, super tight for everybody. And then yeah. And being able to get out and go anywhere. I have my prices dropped, like, way, way down. Like... Uh, the printing pr uh, pic mm -hmm. pictures, the prints that I made in my printmaking class mm -hmm. are like ridiculously cheap, even though some of them are one of a kind and some of them are unable to be reproduced because the, uh, the actual print, the, the copper plate that I was using to make the print was changed or damaged. So a lot of the stuff that I have is like, I won't be able to reproduce it uh, in the same way without, oh gosh, if I could tell you the hours I spent just polishing those plates, like the copper plates especially, you have to polish the plate. Well, first you have to sand it and then you polish it and then you put a ground on it and then you have to work on the ground and then you have to put it in an acid bath. And that goes through this process of putting it in the bath and taking it out. And then if you're doing aquatint, 
it's even a more difficult process because that's how you do the shading for printing and you'll take a, some ground on it where you don't want the acid to hit it and then you'll put it in there for a few minutes and then you'll take it out and then you'll put more ground on it and then you'll put it back in the acid bath and so it's literally i, I would spend weeks on one plate um that i ultimately ruined <laughs> because I left it in the acid bath too long. It ate underneath the plate. Holy cow. And so what you're telling me is each of these pieces represents about 20 cents per hour of your time. <laughs> uh, it's, it was a lot of work. And yeah. Yeah. It, it feels like I'm selling myself short at the prices that I have them at. But I also, like I said, I'm like, I want everyone to have a chance to get something. The things that are the, the hardest to produce are the ones that are going to be the most expensive, clearly. Um, but everything else, like I've been selling uh, graphite small pencil sketches for as little as five dollars. I accidentally posted my t-shirts at ten and my baseball tees at fifteen. By the way, I have all of your pictures. Of Every single picture you sent me is is right uh -huh. here, ready to go over and look at. And it also, um, there's a couple of artists in the audience right now. If you want to jump in and and talk to me and and talk to us in a more coherent, um, I have an art background. Oh than just me because I do not have an art background. Um, Hold up one second. Are the dogs art art formally art trained either? Are they? I'm so sorry. They're, no, you're good. They're you're my good. sister's dogs, they're, and there's five of them. It's all, whoa, that's uh, that's quite and the so pack you have there. When when someone uh, when someone wants to approach the door or walk by the house, it gets very loud in here. I'm sorry. Don't roll by the at Ghost Flesh house unannounced. Just yes, please all. don't. They're so loud and obnoxious, and we love them, but they're very loud because they're big dogs. But yeah, if, if, if Uncle Yosh or Ian wanted to jump in, the, the phone lines are open. Um, so, uh, let me, what, do you want me to get to the, to the pictures now? Sure, if you want to. I mean, if we have people who want to come in and ask questions. Yeah. Um, uh, and I'm, and I'm also looking whatever. at the chat just, as well. But. So I'm just happy to be here. All right, let's but just throw, to, them, the throw them out there in order. Uh, this is the first one right here, and it's behind my chair. That's not going to work. <laughs> Just, eh, eh, moves them. You're not important for this this oh. one. There we oh, go. We're getting there. There we Perfect. go. Perfect. All right, what do we have here? So those are some of my larger graphite uh, pictures. Um, those are the ones that I'm selling for 15 because they are larger pieces. Um, the bottom two actually sold just okay. yesterday so that was really cool nice um like i said the the amount of people that are interested in just some of the crazy drawings that i put together uh like these um the top right one was uh an idea that i had for my printmaking class mm -hmm. um what i was planning to do there was uh i was going to use that <coughs> a relief print uh which would be me taking like a uh, linoleum, or in this case, I was using a Japanese material called gongobon. And you would carve into that, and uh, the image that you carved away will be the white space. And so anything that you want to, uh, the ink on it would be the part that you leave on the plate or the ground or whatever matrix. There are a lot of different words that you could use for it. Mm -hmm. and so that was an idea that I'd had for it, but I'd never gotten around to it because I ended up doing, trying to do something way more complicated. Uh, how, um, um, hmm. how, how, how large are these? I see nothing in um, relation. They're definitely bigger than a standard sheet of paper. I can't remember. So like nine by 12 maybe? Yeah. yeah okay. Probably around yeah, there. So. Um, um, yeah, I guess tell us about the inspiration for the two that are still available. Um. Well, like I said, the top right one was the one that I wanted to do for that printmaking class. Oops, sorry, and then the top one. left one, um, I, I don't know, you know, at, at Free Play, we get a lot of vaporwave style vibes. That's very true. Uh, and I, and I see a lot of really cool vaporwave art and I know Josh specifically is like really good at some of the stuff that I've seen um, as far as like putting that stuff together because I can't do it like I've tried putting it together and it just feels really inorganic and weird and, and like clunky to me but I wanted to try to do it um, and so I did a unicorn uh, it's a cyberpunk unicorn bust 
because you know there's a lot of the whole they'll have the uh like julius caesar busts or i guess it's augustus caesar yes yeah um it'll have the bust and then like the the crazy background and the colors and the lines and so i was trying to do something uh that i could use as a background for that mm -hmm. um and I've been you definitely got the vaporwave into... like background lines and stuff mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. Yeah, I was kind of like just trying to get uh, an idea on the page because what I was hoping to do when I got this phone, I got a Note 9 with the uh, implicit idea uh, that I was going to uh, use it to design art. And I did do a few like uh, graphic art stuff before I broke my stylus forever. Rip. Is, that a, is that a tablet? What is that? Um... No, it was just my phone. It's just the. Oh, wow, you did this on your, the Note you did stuff on your phone. It's incredible. Yeah, it was really cool. There was a, a a picture that I edited of myself where I tried to do some vaporwave stuff on my uh, personal uh, Instagram, and it's just a lot of fun. It was fun to play with, and it it felt really clunky at first, but it was still. Gosh, if these dogs don't stop fighting, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> We'll sit. We'll 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 ship a uh, Beltran out there to and his cat and his yeah. honorary cat. They'll take care of yeah, that. Yeah, whip them into shape. Yes. Um. Here, let me move on to the next one. We have. Yeah, if I'm lucky, we'll see some really cool vaporwave collab stuff with that top right one from, uh, Three Plays Very Own, super cool, graphic, artist. So. Yeah, there's there's and there's quite a few talented artists in our midst, which is very i don't know as a as a a non-artistic but appreciative person um that that's super cool to have all this good good art around um yeah and i didn't even realize how many artists we had like uh uh we have this one art group on facebook called let's make art mm -hmm. and we've just slowly been adding people into it and it's, it's pretty much just a prompt group and like every week we would pick a prompt and we would try to fill it. Uh, we would try to fulfill it by the end of the week. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't get around to it, like that's always fine. But it's just really cool to have a, 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 like, a group of like-minded artists who all have something to contribute, and we all like give each other ideas, and, like seeing what they do, and helping us uh, get out of our own comfort zone with ideas that we probably wouldn't do on our own or think about. Uh, so that's been super helpful. Um, yeah, it's like the one the one group that all. I'm not a part of, and and I I bet there's some really cool stuff that runs through that. I mean, if you want to be, I I'm not I don't feel like I meet the prerequisites. I can't I'm not handy with a pencil. I mean, there's no prerequisite. I mean, if you like art, if you enjoy looking at art, if I enjoy, you enjoy that part, but I artists, can't produce it so well. The best I can do is is give you an avenue to show off your art. I, I wish I wish I had this this type of capability that I, I'm seeing right here. Like this is this is this is so far beyond mm. me. It's not even funny. No so formal those training are actual here. Prints. So those what are, are they? Um, okay, so those were actually made using two different but very similar uh, printing styles. The top one is a transfer print that I made for a copper plate that I was doing. So what I'll do is like. Like I said, after all that work with the plate that we won't go into super detail about because it's, it's tedious and it's long and I'll cry. It makes me so angry. <laughs> oh my goodness. But it, it's, it takes so long. But you, you cover it with the ground after all that hard work and you cover it with the ground. And while the ground is still wet, what you do is I took a piece of newsprint and that's the one at the top with the my mermaid sushi. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's a mermaid in uh, there, isn't it? That's mm -hmm, so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I put uh, a piece of newsprint on top and then I trace the image onto the newsprint and that image gets directly transferred through the ground on the plate. And so when I lift away the paper, the ink that I was tracing gets transferred onto the newsprint and it stays there. And that itself is what's called a transfer print. The one underneath it, the cicada, um, that one is really cool because that's got a similar style method but it was using a different material. So I took a piece of, a piece of plexiglass and I took um, red, red ink and I put rice paper on top of it and I, I drew the design on there. And so when I pulled that away, there's still the image with the red ink um, 
on the on the plate. And so I get two uh, two prints that way because I get the transfer print that has the red lines that I traced from the actual plate itself. Mm -hmm. And then I have the plate that I run through the press with another piece of paper where I get the white lines because those were the parts that I took away when I tr traced it before, if that makes any sense. That sounds way more complex than I thought you were going to show us, which was, in my mind, it was just what you were doodling on in the back of the, the Free Play Richardson bar. Yeah. You are insanely talented. That looks cool. Oh, thank you, thank you. I, I worked really hard on those. Uh, I, did, I did those in my class. Uh, and to answer uh, Uncle Yosha's questions, uh, he said, he asked, if I prefer to sand sit or it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, if I sit while I draw, depending on what I'm doing, I put my face so close to the page that when I look up, I can't see three feet in front of me. Uh, and when I'm standing, if I do that, it looks really weird. So I feel like I'm better at standing while I draw just because I don't accidentally focus too closely on the page. Um, but ultimately it doesn't matter. What I dislike doing the most is where I'm drawing on something that is on the wall because that is it hurts my wrist really bad. So as long as I'm drawing on a flat or like slightly angled surface, it really doesn't matter to me, depending on what medium I'm using, I suppose. But as long as it's not like mounted on the wall and my wrist isn't up the whole time, I'm good. It doesn't matter. All right, let's move on to the next piece we have here. This is so cool. I've never had an artist showcase before. Hey, happy to do it. I'm happy fine. to help. I mean, you've been helping us. You've been volunteering. So. Um, well, I love I love free play and I love the community that we've built and I just like to be there and everyone there is super cool. Me too, obviously. And you've been to every location, so you know you're you're pretty pretty beloved uh, no matter what free play you go to. So happy to do this. Um, what else you got here? Ghost prints? Okay, these are some more prints. Yeah. Okay, so uh, a ghost print is those two prints are additive prints. So what I do is I take a plate, a plexiglass plate, like I mentioned before, and I actually painted the design. Uh, I took paintbrushes with the ink, because it is ink. It's not, it's not actual paint. It's all ink. And so I take the ink and I put it onto the plate mm -hmm. and I paint it directly onto the plate and then I run it through the press. Mm -hmm. um, typically, you want to... Uh, these types of prints were on rag paper and so you can soak the paper beforehand and we like to soak the paper for at least 10 to 30 minutes because it lets the um we'll we'll dry it out a little bit and like place it between two towels and we'll we'll get some of the extra water out but it lets the ink soak into the paper a lot better uh and so during the first run of the press that was that's the original one that you see there on on the right um, but if there's enough ink on the plate after that first run through the press, what you can do is you can take a second piece of paper and run it through the press again. And that's the, the ghost print that you see there, because it's not the first run through the press, it's actually me putting it through the press a second time uh, and the ink getting onto the paper, because there was just so much on it. And so I actually got two designs from one, this is called a monoprint because these are really hard to replicate and reproduce. Mm -hmm. um, and typically those are just ones that, like I said, you would paint the design onto it, you'd roll it through the press and then you'd wash it off and that's done. You'll never see it again. Wow. Um, yeah, so yeah, those, right. those are like stuff. my babies. I understand. Are all this stuff, is all this stuff still available at your Instagram? Uh, a lot of it still is. I need to update the ones that I sold yesterday, mm -hmm. um, just because I did make uh, someone did make a big purchase yesterday, and so some of the originals are gone. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm definitely going to be on there and uh, update that here shortly. So if you guys um, have any questions for me as far as what's available while we're here today, I'm more than welcome to happy that for, or more than welcome to answer that for you. Awesome. Uh, the question from Simple Interest has Carissa said her favorite or least favorite medium? Uh, I have not said it, but I will tell you now that I hate acrylic. I hate acrylic so much. Uh, my high school teacher, my senior year, my junior or senior year, I took an art class and I, we had to do a lot of acrylic and she made me cry because oh I just, I fought her so hard on it. <laughs> um, and just the fact that the paint will dry really quickly like if you're planning on doing an acrylic piece, I always recommend that you do it like in one day 
because the paint will dry out. And for me, having like trying to reproduce the same shade of a color is really difficult. Like, because I kind of have an idea of the shade that I'm making, but it's just hard for me to put those put the colors together to cr to reproduce the same shade exactly. And so that is so frustrating for me. Uh, however, gouache, I feel like, or gauche, however you want to pronounce it, is the best. Uh, it's the best medium that was ever created because it's like if acrylic and watercolor had a baby. It's water soluble, um, and you have the option of getting like metallic or opaque, um, but it's still a lot thicker than watercolor, so it does have that opa opacity to it. Um, and it's a lot easier to maneuver. And if it dries out, you just add water to it and it typically springs back to life. So, so useful. So what do we have here? More prints? Yes, those are more prints. Uh, the one on the left is really, really cool. Uh, it's a texture relief, or not a relief. Um, it's another copper plate print. Those are both prints that I made using copper plates. Um, and those are actual dandelions in that picture that's what i used to create those images so what you do is like i said you have a ground on your copper plate that you do after all the polishing mm -hmm. and while it's still wet um like i said before you take uh normally you could take a picture and trace an image on there well what we did for this one is we actually take dandelions or or anything textured so textured paper or we had people doing mesh or feathers anything that you can squish flat. Um, and we put that on there, we put some cheesecloth and some newsprint to keep, especially with this, there was chloroform everywhere. Like it bled through several sheets of newsprint <laughs> and got a little bit on the, the cloth that we're supposed to put on the press so that it doesn't get messy. So I made a mess. But I really like the result because it turned out really well. I love that you can see the individual seeds. Yeah, you definitely um, can't. In the paper. Kind of, kind of flying off. Although I know it's trickeration that I had, had to position. It. Yeah. I had to position all of those individual pieces on the plate before I ran it through the press to get it to look like that, honestly. And so I was like very meticulously like, okay, well, how do I want this leaf to? to bend and I'd like fold it over and I think it's really cool and interesting how you can see all the little like bends and folds in the leaf and the big splotches that you see on the outside that's where all of the liquid in the plant kind of like squished out of it um, I don't know if you can see from the from the photo but if you saw it in person like I'm telling you it's that was a messy piece uh, uh, the one on the on yeah. the right was another cop, uh, mm -hmm. copper plate print and that's just the line art where I would. Uh, um, is it piles of intestines, as as Yosh it puts is. it? It is. Uh, I got butterflies in my guts, man. <laughs> I don't, there's nothing um, to be nervous about. It's just all of your art on display and you talking about it. I know it for everyone to see and me in talking of, about it in front of the entire listening. world. Why would you? Why would you have butterflies in your guts? <laughs> Well, oh, I don't know if you know this about me, but I have very bad anxiety. <laughs> well, um, um, I would suggest expressing yourself through art, and it seems like you do, and you do it quite well. Mm -hmm. So. Well, thank you. I've, I've, I've put in a lot of work and a lot of practice. Let, uh, let, let me speak for everybody yeah. in the audience, too, to say that we very much appreciate you and very much appreciate that you're sharing all this with us. So. I'm, don't I'm feel anxious. It here. could literally be the worst stuff in the world. And by the way, everybody's going on and on about how you have all kinds of talent. Uh, and we would still Thank love it. Thank you guys so much. So Thank you. I'm, you don't need I'm to feel anxious. honestly overwhelmed with all the, all the nice words that I've been getting the, the, just this last week. Um, putting all of this stuff out for people to see. Um, like, I might cry. <laughs> I'm not Oprah. You uh, don't have to cry. I know, I, I can't cry. I'll cry when I get off the air. Oh, I see a QB. Yes, it's QB. It My sweet beat. Oh, so when we were doing the Vampire Savior for the uh, the anniversary, mm -hmm. I think it was last year, um, I, I had this idea to make little chibi characters from all of the characters um, in the game. And then what I wanted to do was like make them into stickers and then hide them around the bar or like give them out at the event. Mm -hmm. And I honestly just did not, I have a Felicia one that I did that I did on my phone. 
And then I had this QB one that I did um, here. But past that, I just didn't really get around to it. Even though like Sinko and uh, uh, Bushimon, I feel like would have been really fun. Oh, with the with the with, the with the the teeth in his chest or his mm -hmm. yeah stomach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good. Or Ankaris. Oh! I mean, you still have extra time. It's not like I have no. I've I've got a lot of time. Right, we're all just sort of pinned in our home, so. We'll, we'll, we'll look for series two of your Vampire Savior inspired stickers. Yes, yes, nope. definitely. It'll be a thing eventually. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Mm -hmm. And for someone who said that they really like uh, uh, my pile of intestines, there's more intestines there, top right corner. I don't remember what it was that made me draw her, but she's literally just a big pile of guts. This, the, Sorry, what was that again? The big pile of guts? The top, uh -huh, top right. Yeah, well, she's a big pile of guts. A big pile of guts. More intestines. Mm -hmm. Very nice. What? What? What motivates you to do the pile of guts? If I, if is it anxiety? Um, I mean, don't you don't feel free to not share as well. But I'm just curious. Oh no! I mean, honestly, I've always been very open about it. Um, about how my art is my outlet, and that's also why I have a hard time parting with a lot of my pieces, is because I put a lot of emotion into them. Um, the guts, I really. Um, I like the forms of them, and they do represent a lot of like when when I draw that, when I draw uh, people without hands, it's like lack of control, like things are really tangled. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like the guts, especially, it's just like there's just so much going on on the inside and beneath the surface that you don't see it until it all comes spilling out. I I understand. That's or I understand as much as I can. That's that's really mm -hmm. cool that you are you're able to put that on paper. Um, and then there's this one, this, this lady who has a, a, a boo-boo. Yeah, the, uh, she's got, um, a, a little heart sweater. She's actually a redraw that I did, um, from, gosh, it must have been a few years ago. And this is a bonus that I haven't told anybody, because it's supposed to be a surprise. But, uh, if you purchase that one, you get the original drawing from, like, I think it was, like, 20s. 14, 15, or 16. It's like at least four years ago. You'll get the original drawing with it, so you can see what she actually looks like in color. Mm -hmm. um, but without the color, it means she's a lot cheaper. So she's only 10 bucks instead of 15, and well, you get a bonus picture with her. Well, here it's got it's got some red in it. So mm -hmm. that's more pen. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I that's ink. Gotcha. Well, very nice. Um, again, if you want any of this, it's at your Instagram at Ghostfish. <laughs> Ghost flesh. My bad. I was only listening to Ray. Ray, Ray <laughs> is my remote to producer today, and uh, he also has some drink recommendations for later. Ooh, okie dokie. They won't surprise you. All right, what's next? Is it PBR? Maybe. <laughs> or something that tastes like pickles. Oh, goody. I don't know exactly what that is then. Um, what you're seeing on screen now is another set of, it's a series of prints that I actually did. Um, and this is a relief print. So this is the kind of print that I was talking about earlier where I'm carving into uh, linoleum or again in this case, I opted for gongla bar. Uh, it's a Japanese material. And the reason that I use that one is because linoleum is typically very tough on its own. And in order to carve into it, you, you usually want to heat it up first mm -hmm. to soften it up. Uh, while you're carving into it but the gonglebon is so uh it's light and it's soft so you can just carve into it uh you gotta be a little careful because it does have a tendency to slide and so sometimes you can get chunks where you're not meaning to to carve away from uh but ultimately it's a lot of fun and i really enjoy it and gosh did it make my arm hurt just carving in to this big piece over and over again. And like I said, uh, or I didn't say this yet, but I keep putting my hands in a lot of the drawings to just give an idea for scale. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so um, that all one's right. a pretty good size hands. piece. Three of those have already sold. It's uh, a series of six. Uh, so they're only $30, uh, even though there's only six pieces. Um, yeah, and I don't have a press in which I can recreate them, mm -hmm. nor do I have the ink 
Uh, so I don't know if I'll ever have a chance to make more. Like if I did have a chance, that would be great. That would be awesome. I've actually been considering getting a makerspace uh, just because I heard that they have like a rolling press. And I was like, oh no. It, it feels that's like they awesome. have everything there. Uh, that's what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the chat is piping up and saying you should draw skeletons for a free play t-shirt. Which well, I'm, I would I'm support. I would support that idea as well. For Josh, because all of Josh's T-shirts that he's made are some of my favorite shirts in general. I'm wearing a Josh, uh, a Josh original right now. Yeah, it's my favorites are the totally rad, and the uh, the free play staff shirts we got for the party. Those oh are, yeah, I love those shirts so much, and they're so comfy. Um, but I will say, uh, if he was down to collab. I have a picture that I drew of, if anyone remembers Ralph, that is the name for the skeleton that was hanging out at Free Play Denton over Halloween. Mm -hmm. We named him after the wolf in total, in, is it Rampage? Yeah, Rampage. Rampage, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, it took me yes. a second. Ralph, yeah. Lizzie, yeah. and I can't remember the other one. Uh, George, I think, for the You got tape. it, you got it. I loved that game. I had it on N64. Yes, yes. It's, uh... It's a fun one, although it, it does it is a bit, a bit grindy. I can't say I've ever gotten to the very very end of it because there's so many stages. But if you get to yeah. uh, you get to destroy it does get repetitive. you get to destroy literally every city in America in Rampage, like literally everyone, even down to like small towns. They put a bunch of real towns in there. Uh, the the problem is it does take a while. Um, it's actually much more efficient to destroy all of the American cities with COVID-19. On to the next one. <laughs> Let's see, was that this one? So, there we go. Whoa, a lot happening here. Oh yeah, that, um, I was trying to get a big group photo of all of my little graphite pictures that I have. Um, I see some, I see some interesting things here. I see a Pac-Man, a Ms. Pac-Man over here. Like, oh yeah, those were the designs that I wanted to do for the free play bathrooms in Denton. Oh yeah. James and I had talked about it and we were definitely gonna do it. It was totally gonna be a thing. We just never got around to it. All right, all right. So I'm a big fan of Ms. Pac-Man art. Are you Are you aware? I I might be a little aware. I might know of a little something that you hang or that you hang on to yeah. and carry around that this I've seen on a particular clipboard. I think. Correct. Well, that's. Is that, is that what you're gonna go get? Yeah, that's the small version. Um, <laughs> this is actually this is into the drawing. This is actually one of the only only pieces of art I have in the house. Oh, wow, it's huge! Yeah, it's not actually translucent, that's the green screen, but, you know, it's awesome, and I love it. That is really cool. Anywho, back to your show. You got some Ms. Pac-Man stuff, which has caught my eye. Just what? a little bit. I, I had a lot of fun with that design, because I saw that on the cabinet. She's got fishnets. Yes, she does. And I, was, I don't know why that surprises me so much, but the arms were too much. I feel like Pac-Man can have legs or arms but not both you know like i can possibly put myself on the actually i'm going to continue to go into the drawings those who are commenting in the chats because at least this way i can point to say uh this one directly and say what what is that what's the inspiration oh, for this because i'm liking it yes I saw a picture of that outfit online, uh, and that's it. I just I saw the outfit. I thought it was really cute, and I made a character that I thought would wear it well. And that's that's it. She was just so adorable. I was like, that's something that I feel like like a little fairy would wear. That's that's like fairly odd parents kind of fairy. Awesome. And all these were intended to be for the bathrooms in Free Play Den. Is that right? Uh, well, the um, the Pac-Man ones for sure. Oh, okay. I wanted those two designs, like the. Mrs. Pac-Man was going to go on the ladies' restroom, and Mr. Pac-Man was going to go on the men's restroom. And James and I had talked about that. We played around with that idea for a little bit, but then I moved to Richardson. Well, I'm not, I, I don't at all regret your move to Richardson because it let me spend more time with you, um, and I'm very appreciative. Man, I like a lot of these a lot. Like this. Well, thank you. Wait, wait. It's, it's hard to, to point. Like... This, this crying mushroom, one over here. The no, the hands. crying one. That, no, it's, it's past it. I can't. My, my arm goes into oh, negative uh -huh, space at that uh -huh, point. But yeah, yeah. so good. So Roll good. The eyeballs. Yeah, so I will uh, move on to the next one. By the way, if you want this, it's at Instagram 
at Ghost Flesh. And it's spelled in the bottom part of your, your screen there. What do we got? Oh, there's a lot happening here. Yeah, this is some more line art that I did. Um, all but the top one has sold. Okay. So uh, this is... I think. Yeah, th th these are... I can see why these sold, because these are amazing. Um, but we'll look <laughs> at this one right here. This is the one that's still available? Uh-huh, uh-huh. The one that... Uh, yeah, the top one hasn't sold. And get on it. Mm-hmm. It's only twenty dollars. Yeah, what what is it? What's the inspiration here? Yeah, well, it's for a that face one, everywhere. I I've had a lot of fun doing um, so having people like cut into ribbons has been a concept that I've been playing around with for a long time. If you go back through my Instagram you can see other girls that I've done. Sometimes it's just their faces, sometimes it's their whole body. But I always had a lot of fun playing around with that concept. Uh, and I wanted to do a better one for a collab with an artist that I really uh, admire and enjoy following on Instagram called uh, Astro Sim. And he's got a, an account called Art of Astro Sim. And he and I do collabs every now and then. And so I had that one with the in intention. Oh my God, it's a cat. What's the cat's name? Keaton. K E Y T E N. Keaton. I love him. I'll take 10. Her. And uh, yes. Oh, well, I love her, and I'll take 10. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> sorry, but yeah, so that one, I wanted to give him something really interesting to, to color in because he does a lot of really fun colors and, like, light schemes. Um, and so I wanted to do something that had, like, a lot of shadows and a lot of opportunity for depth. And also, I was just really wanting to go back and rework this this concept that I love uh, and incorporate it with uh, with the insects as well. Is the one on top the original? Is the question. It is indeed. Mm -hmm. And it's still I actually didn't, I didn't have a chance to make any copies of that one because uh, I only just finished it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so that is pretty cool. It is the original, Ian. I think that's Super Mario back there. Some interesting music happening. All right, what we got here? Proofs and limited editions. Yeah, so that is the one of the copper plates that I did in my printmaking class. Again, that one's that one's a limited edition of three, and the proof is seventy-five. The proof is always going to be the most expensive part of a series, from what I've heard, um, in my printmaking class, because that's the first run through the press, and that's where you first get to see the design. Okay. Um, actually, I, uh, the bonatire actually is the most. Uh, the most expensive because the, the proof is just like a practice one and the bonatire is like okay this one is ready to addition and then the um then i have like i said like you see there the addition of three and this one is super uh important to me uh and special to me because those four that are not the top one on the left those can't be made again mm -hmm. because i reworked that plate into what you see up there on the left because i used um uh, that aqua tint, uh, um, oh, what's the word? Technique for the shading. It, it all looks so, fantastic. Thank you. I spent a lot of time on that one. That one actually took me over a year to finish because I started the plate my first, the first time I took my printmaking class. Uh, and then I failed that class because I never turned anything in. <laughs> Wow. And then um, Ian says, "How would one buy these? By the way, it's on your Instagram at Ghost Flesh, spelled like this." And that is definitely where you can see it. All inquiries, you can hit me up on Facebook. You can hit me up on uh, on here. Um, I will be at the arcade this weekend, and I accept cash, PayPal, and Zelle because mm -hmm. um, I can't find my card reader. All right, so uh, do you have a shop on Facebook or is it just your name? Uh, it was just my name. Okay. I, I think I should probably. This put is your Facebook an profile picture at, at, at Carissa Keith. Yes, yes. And so if you have any inquiries and you want me to send you what I have left, I can definitely do that. Um, and Lego says he's not listening yeah. to you. He doesn't want to hear your voice. Apparently, he's got a work, oh, work meeting. Nah, he's, he's trying to buy. Can't can't hear our instructions. That's okay. You can. Oh, oh well, I can't tell him to do it in the Discord. Uh, we can later. 
Yeah, like. Oh, some more color here. Some 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 vibrant color. Yeah, those are ones that I actually made. A lot of those uh, are ones that I made for the skater die um, uh, event that I did, and those were a lot of fun. Um, the top left one for me uh, means a lot because I have a really hard time uh, with dissociating. And so that one is, it's called Disconnected, but it's about like how you, when you dissociate, like you have a severe disconnect from your brain to the rest of your body. Mm -hmm. um, and so that one is really cool to me. Um, the other ones are just ones that I had a lot of fun doing. <laughs> how, how, how are you able to, to put it all together and, and be, you do so well in public at the bar, like, I don't see if I see you disassociating at the bar it's it's very faint and like you're 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 as vibrant of a person as I know and and I and feed I, off of my, my anxious energy a lot okay uh, and I've had a lot of practice with it yeah you do you do quite well um you're one of the most interesting people I've met at free play um obviously clearly the one some of the more one of the more talented people as well but um as someone who's lived with uh, people with different disassociative issues throughout their lives um you, you 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 put on a good face if nothing else um well thanks i do my best you do you do it well i i the the shape of the the women in the especially the the ones on the right side here remind me of like brian lee o'malley's uh scott pilgrim era art right because ramona oh, yeah ramona was a was was had a had shape and wasn't just a twig and and i really i really dig it i have a weakness for thighs mm -hmm. and i like to draw them <laughs> well then we benefit from your weakness <laughs> thanks i'm just really thankful that a lot of the um the uh progress that i've made like anatomy wise because like especially with the bottom left corner or no, the bottom right, the bottom right one. Mm -hmm. uh, I just feel like the anatomy in that one is super weird because I was really obsessed with the thigh gap. Okay. Um, but now I'm just like, man, I'm so glad that I worked past that and I know what people's bodies look like now. Was it just just practice into infinity or did you get some direct you know, help no, with that? I just, I drew a lot. I started actually uh, looking at references mm -hmm. and that helped a lot as well. Gotcha. Uh, yes, the chat very much approves of the thick thighs. I, I can see that. Uh, someone thighs, link her Facebook. Patience. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna link your Facebook before we get too much further. Okay. I would, but I like I said, I really don't know how technology works. I got you. For the longest time, I couldn't take the Discord off of speaker on my phone, and all I had to do was press one button. You know. It's it's one amongst many buttons, so no, <laughs> That's true. no there worries were like there. Four buttons there. Um, there we go. Oh, it's actually facebook.com slash infected flesh, though not s not spelled how you might think. So I'm I going to put I it <laughs> right. That was one here. of those two uh, usernames I told you about. There you go. Where ghost flesh came I'm from. I'm trying to hit it. All right. I see you, dude. I still have three of those. Uh, if you want to call it a skull shroom, that's cool. It's actually a UFO, but it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Not even a little bit. Only, only everybody thinks that, so it's fine. There, did that come through? There it did. There's your your URL. Nailed it. Okay. Moving on to the next one here. What we got? Nope, that's me. Oh, Bye. No. Oof, gone. Oh, goodbye. Finally, finally got rid of that delp, dude. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, this is a closer look at uh, at what you made with those uh, the prints mm -hmm. before. Yeah. What? Mhm. Mm so you can see a little bit more detail on all the shading and all the like little intricate line work that's on there. Mhm. Mm yeah. Oh, no worries, dude. You're not the only one who says it looks like a shroom. Like, I, literally everybody says that to me. Uh. <laughs> But yeah, that one's one of my favorites. I, I took so much time on that one. And like I said, it took me over a year 
to get all the stuff that I wanted to do on it done. And I'm just so thankful that that's one of the ones that I put the effort into. Because I want to say most of the copper plates that I made that semester when I finished up uh, got messed up. Like yeah. working with uh, the ferric chloride and in the acid bath and all of the stuff that goes into uh, this process it's very risky mm -hmm. and a lot of the times it doesn't turn out the way that you want it to and I had to scrap a lot of big pieces that it it, it hurt because I spent so much time and uh, like just thinking about what I wanted to do for this class before I went into it and to only get one solid plate out of the entire two semesters um, a little disheartening but I'm I'm really pleased with how this one turned out yeah, no. Uh, and I feel like it at least makes up for it a bit. <laughs> it looks fantastic. I really, um, now that I see it closer, I, I, I'm really enjoying the, the, the doors opening up into the, into the main characters. It's really, it is impressive. It's, uh, man, I want them all. All right. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Thanks. Ooh, bees. Is this QB? <laughs> is this QB as well? No, okay, okay. those are just some bees. Cause I don't know if you know this. Hi, I'm Carissa. I like bees. Hi, Carissa. I just Hi. thought you liked QB and Vampire Savior. Uh, I do like those also, but I think the main reason I like QB is because I want to be an apiologist at some point. Really? Uh, yes. So right, my my ultimate goal is I'm gonna have my own bee farm and I'm gonna have an orchard and make jam. Well, since you're you're uh, amateur, a what's the, what's the word? Apiologist. A yes. Do we have killer bees? Yeah. Africanized honeybees. Uh, is that a thing here now? I mean, uh, I know that if you go out to certain parts of Texas, I've definitely been advised to stay away from them because I've heard that they have killer bees. Mm -hmm. Killer, killer bee is the colloquial term for Africanized honeybees, of course. But that was all the rage when I was a little kid. We were going to be eaten alive by killer bees. It didn't quite pan out that way. Well, there's just a lot more. Instead, it was the coronavirus that ate us. Oh, mm, I thought it was going to be Ebola or Zika. Ah, I I, Ebola, Ebola, Ebola is, is too too quick and efficient. You can't you can't spread it. All right. Oh, okay, okay. Well, you can spread it certainly, but like. It's so urgent that you, 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 it's not as insidious I as I don't know, I feel like I'd still rather not die by Ebola. Agreed, 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 yes. On my list of ways to die, Ebola is right near the end of the list. <laughs> um, what's this Thanks. top one? I see the bees, but what do we got up here? Is that also bees? Uh, no, that's actually a, a, a bound dove that, I, that one's actually mounted or matted. I don't know the difference, gosh. Uh, but yeah, it's on a mat board, and so it has, uh, it's ready for being framed. Um, I did the off-center look for it just because I felt like that fit the, the piece a little bit better. Um, I really liked that one. That one is also a transfer print. Um, so, that one is one that I can't make again because it's on the newsprint and I, I transferred it over. I actually can't even find the plate that I did that for. So, so I definitely can't make more of that one. <laughs> one of a kind. Mm hmm I like those. I, I those do are too. so much fun. The one underneath it was a, a monoprint and the, the stencil you see there for the honeycombs is actually a stencil that I made myself. Yeah, it looks really good. I, I, I hesitate to even take it off the screen because I'm, I'm enjoying just looking at it. Well, thank you. I love the way those bees turned out. They're little fuzzy faces. I know. I want to go back. I want to go back. It's so cute. Okay, we'll go back. They're so cute. We can go back. Just for a second. Yeah, they're so cute. Man, it looks good. The bleeding effect. Ugh, so good. All right, Are sorry. we talking about the hot zone? Hot spot? Hot, hot zone. Hot spot? What? Oh, they're... We're talking hot. about the book in the chat. Yeah, sorry. I had to read that, I think. If I understand. Book. Are these hearts with intestines? No. Those are, uh, it's a geode heart, actually. Oh, yes. Okay. This is something that uh, uh, my roommate would know more about. Yeah. I really like these. These are um, what my professor called a variant edition because they're not the, ex because the image in the background, I used uh, 
oh golly, chine collé is the name of that method in which it's like a collage type of thing, but you use a, a powder paste. Um, like you get the paper wet, you sprinkle it with an adhesive, and then you put the paper that you want on it. Uh, and that's just a really thin piece of decorative paper that I saw and liked and thought would be perfect for this design. Um, and so it's called a variant edition because none of the papers in the background actually look the same, but it's still an addition because it has the same it image on it. And so that's a limited variant edition of just three because I don't have any more of that lovely, beautiful paper. Yeah, that is... I'm I'm impressed by all of this, but I'm most impressed by the... the sheer amount of different techniques you're allowed are able to apply to everything this is phenomenal i don't like i've seen people artists and you know like for example joe skills you know he's always spray painting uh fantastic uh the best graffiti artist i've ever seen in fact and he'll put it on different mediums uh you know on his on the the on cans i've seen just, just all kinds of things you wouldn't you wouldn't ex necessarily think about but you got everything it feels like like every time i hit the button i see a different um medium for art that i've never seen before <laughs> uh i have just been i enjoy learning about it and i've always wanted to take a printmaking class um so when i had the opportunity to do it at colin i jumped on board and it was one of the most fun uh, memorable experiences that i've ever had yeah, it's uh, you're 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 blowing my mind, and I worked in a print shop for far, far, far too long. Well, thank you. You're welcome. What else? We got cats. I like cats. Yeah, Christmas cards. Christmas cards. Uh, yeah, the cat, the cat, and the Christmas tree card have already been spoken for, but I have enough materials that I can make those. Um, someone w was inquiring about them. Mm -hmm. I typically only make cards for Valentine's Day, but I decided to, I, I wanted to try my hand at making Christmas cards because I had intended on, um... Yeah, it looks like you got some 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 requests for re, re, redos on the cat one, apparently. I know, people really like that cat one, so I yeah. think I'm going to have to make a bunch of him because he is super popular. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to, I, I played with the idea of selling my own uh, cards. I had, I'm very ambitious, like, my ambition when I was younger, I wanted to put Hallmark out of business. Uh, like that was my goal. It's like, I'm gonna make such amazing cards and they're gonna be beautiful and I'm gonna just shut Hallmark right down because they're gonna be so great. Uh, and now, you know, my ambitions are a lot smaller. I just wanna put Smuckers out of business. Okay, okay. It's, it's just, just oh. you, it's good to keep them somewhere. And also, uh, you know, my we'll have the- My sister coffee because she loves me. At, at the end, oh. Coffee sounds so good right now. The uh, I'm looking forward to uh, in a couple decades maybe the the Carissa channel <laughs> after, you get, after you get done. All right, with so homework. I'm gonna have to get a rolling count for how many cat cards I need to make because I see at least two, and then I knew another person. So that's three already that people are like they have to have the cat. Yeah, so good. So much color here. This is the most color we've seen out of any of them so far. Well, that painting is one that I did back in high school, and that is the bane of my existence because it's acrylic. I see. Well, you did a fine job on it, if it's, even well, if it's the bane. I it... had a lot of fun with that one. Yeah. It's, wow. I mean, in some ways, it's, lo it's like I'm looking at a, at a, at a photograph. The, the, it's so realistic looking. Like, like I know that logo. <laughs> <laughs> I've bought, I've I've bought some of those before. Well, it I um I love sock monkeys. Like little known fact about me, I collect sock monkeys. Can someone clip that? I would like that in my, my Dropbox closet. as soon as possible. Sorry, continue on about your love of sock monkeys. <laughs> Just I like them, and I thought they were cute. And we had to do a still life in that painting in that art class I told you about with the teacher that I hated. Mm -hmm. Um, and so. Um, yeah, I fought her, I fought her over that painting forever, and ultimately, like, the advice that she gave me about it was really solid advice, and it did ultimately make the picture look a lot better. But I fought her tooth and nail, like, every chance I had, because, and I have a good reason, because I left that setup, um, in the classroom, 
over the weekend and I was like, I feel like I should move the stuff. Like, I really want to move these sock monkeys. She's like, no, they'll be fine over the weekend. It's not a big deal. I come back over the weekend and guess what sock monkey is missing? My favorite one, Simon, who's sitting in the skull. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he was not there. He was nowhere to be found. And she's like, oh, well, that sucks. I was like, mm, I hate you so oh. much. Maybe we can find you another Simon sock monkey. Would that be okay? Do you already have one? No, I, I haven't gotten another one of him. I, I love him. All right. Car Carissa uh. needs her favorite sock monkey, Simon. That's this one back somehow, some way. If you found him, so cute. this sock monkey is missing. Wanted poster. Looking like just mm -hmm. like this. <laughs> and, and, and what do we have with the butterflies up here? Oh, those were two designs that I had to do for my, um, uh, it was a design class. So I took an intro to 2D design uh, once I got into college. And one of the things that we had to do was we had to take an image that only had a limited palette of colors and then reproduce the same image where we just change one color to show how it changes the atmosphere of a piece. Um, and honestly, I wish that I, instead of blue for the one on the left, I definitely feel like I should have done purple. Um, that's, so that's the artist that I know. Every artist I know always, yep, yep, always yep. got problems with their own art after the fact. Even though you're like, hey, Josh, this is like the greatest looking thing I've ever seen. And you did it in 12 seconds on no notice. Thank you. And then, you know, you get 17 revisions in your, in your Google Cloud. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, I mean, it still turned out really well. I'm digging the rainbow. Like, I love the vibe. Oh yeah, no. That's why I'm hoping that he'll he'll be able to create that um that vapor babe bus. No, here I'll I'll show you what I am loving is uh is a collaboration, which is this this thing right here. That thing will always mm, be mm -hmm. just my favorite. Unnecessary trans scene transitions everywhere all the time. It's amazing. All right. I think it turned out really well too, and yes. we were all super excited to see it. It's just, it's just, it's, it hits you right at the heartstrings, and it's beautiful, and it's a collaboration with two of our great artists, Ian and Josh, mm -hmm. um, and and of course everybody else. Like it's it's community too. It's just got all of us in there. I know, oh. like I said, like just the amount of artists that we have in this community was very surprising for me because I didn't. I didn't know that I had so many people that enjoyed doing art, especially like the regulars mm -hmm. who come in. Um, like, and that's why we created this art group on Facebook, is so that we can all like come together and share our ideas. Um, how many? How many of? How many are there in that? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, uh, let's see. I want to say there's like. Shoot, I don't know. I don't know how to count. Um, fair enough. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, apparently we've got. That's that's the group, is it? I'll say artstation.com oh, yeah, slash let's make art. That's fantastic. Uh, well, that's the art station that Josh made that actually showcases all of the pieces that we've been doing. I want to say there's six or seven of us now. All right. Well, I am bookmarking that right now. And you can talk about what we have on the screen now, which is a cute doggy. Oh, my God. It's the love of my life. The star in my sky. It's Roxy. Uh, this is a dog that I got to dog sit and is owned by a really good friend of mine and I fell in love with her and I love her so much and I have never loved anything more in my whole life and yeah so I drew a bunch of pictures of her. Uh, the very top one, the ink on newsprint, that's one of those transfer methods I was uh, talking about before. Uh, the bottom one, it's just a ballpoint pen drawing um, that I had a lot of fun with and it turned out way better than I was expecting because I didn't even use like a pencil, um, a, a pencil outline first. I just went in it with a pen and it turned out way better than I expected. Um, the bottom right is the mini, it's a small plate that I'd made uh, as a practice for the bigger plate that you see for the for the one on newsprint because that's the size that i was going for and that's the plate that i absolutely ruined and there is no going back from um because i left it in the tank a bit too long and it ate right through the ground and so the entire plate itself uh got bit by the acid 
Um, so you now you have plate oh. mush. I have what? Plate mush. Oh yeah, it, it's just it doesn't look good. Uh, my my professor even polished it, uh, or tried to sand it and polish it up for me because he saw how much time and effort that I put into it, mm -hmm. and he didn't want to have he didn't want me to have to scrap it either. But ultimately, it's just it's not a good plate. Uh, and now I need to go find where I can recycle copper. <laughs> I'm I'm sure there are places. Uh, may, you might have to wait till the end of uh, the apocalypse. The apocalypse, yes. But you know what? The apocalypse has tried like four different times, and it has failed to kill us yet. So I think we're coming back, all of us, all of us, and yeah, we're going to. Yeah, remember 2012 and Y2K? We were all so certain the world was going to end. Yeah, I I didn't believe it then, um, and I don't believe it now. But uh, uh, those were either. way, 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 way less significant than this one. Uh, let's see here. But it's not going to get us. We no, might catch no. COVID-19, but we're going to recover. And we're going to bring Certainly. free play back. More colors. So much color. Yeah. Rainbows of color. Well, I really like working with watercolor. Like, I don't do it a lot because it's kind of tedious and there's a lot that goes into it. But mm. I really enjoy watercolor and I like working with watercolor. I actually, these watercolors specifically are from a brand called Core and it's Q O R. And honestly, they are some of the most vibrant colors I have ever had the pleasure of working with. They're so bright, they're so vibrant. Like, they even photograph really well. They do. Um, the white that I used for um, uh, the Space Babe, uh, she, on the bubble, like that's actually gouache. So you can see there, like it, it uh, it's more opaque than watercolor itself because it covers up those other colors behind it. The Space Babe um, is really catching my eye. Can you, can you tell me more about it? Uh, I just, so <laughs> this is gonna sound really funny, but Snapchat had a filter at one point where if you open your mouth, it like a bubble pops up around your head. Mm -hmm. And I liked that idea. I was like, well, what if like they were using a bubble as like a helmet, like a space helmet? Um, Cause I've seen stuff like that where people will do that underwater. Um, but I just really liked the idea of it. And I wanted to try to paint a bubble just because the colors have always been so fun. And I've seen people execute it really well and I wanted to try my hand at it. Uh, any significance to the number nine or possibly 60, depending on your perspective? Uh, nine's my favorite number. Oh, okay. There you uh, go. I feel like nine's a good solid number. It's three threes. Um, it, it makes a perfect cube. Like when you line them all up, well, there you go. Whenever we do the Carissa Open on a on a, a fighting game, we're definitely going to do a first to nine. Ayo, let's go! <laughs> oh, I like that. I, I'm hey. just I'm just now seeing the heart, but yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling that a lot. Mm. Oh yeah, I I like her. I think she's super cute, mm. and um, I do have copies of a a few of these that are much cheaper. If you if people like don't want to get originals as well, but I'm sure that picture will come up later. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, you want me to go back? I okay. was just going to say, well, just one thing. I have a really okay. fun story about the cactus girl. Cactus that, girl. Uh, Is that, uh, that's this one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, bottom right. When mm -hmm. I was, uh, it was like my first or second year of going to call in. And for whatever reason, I thought I was going to go and try to be a science teacher. Um, even though anyone who knows me will tell you that I'm not good at explaining things and I'm not a good storyteller. And that's Both okay. of those are bold faced lies that have been proven over the course of the last 75 minutes. You're both, you're fantastic at both. Oh, thanks. I, I hope you, like if you, there's a concept that you guys don't understand, if I'm explaining something and, and it just isn't clicking and you have questions about it, please let me know. I'll do my best, mm -hmm. but I will probably tell you that Google will tell you better. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the, the accumulation of most of the knowledge of human history. So, yeah, okay. Yes, that's hard yes. to compete with. Yeah, but that um, when I thought I was going to go into teaching, I had to do 16 hours of um, classroom sit-in time. And so I would sit in a high school chemistry class. Mm -hmm. And there was this girl who came in to the class. And she had piercings in her face and she had her hair shaved with crazy colors and she was wearing that outfit and that actually is a picture of her because I liked her aesthetic so much. 
And I was also so jealous. I was like, what do you mean you get green and purple hair in high school? That's not fair. Well, you get green and purple hair behind the bar. Yeah, yeah, I know. I had to, I had to turn into an adult. Like, I had to wait for that right. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, so what's this one? Uh, that's one that I did for my, um, I think it was my design class. Because we had to do uh, three different pieces that had different um, types of values. So one of them had to be high contrast, one was low contrast, and one was supposed to be a good mix of the in-between. This is my high contrast piece based on a, a rock that I saw, or I guess crystal, uh, a crystal that I saw at the Perot Museum. Okay, yeah. I've been there with uh, Uncle Yosh, actually. Or not with, oh, but what? we were there at the same time. How about that? Oh. Oh, okay. You, you would you would you wouldn't have liked it. There was free alcohol. It was. Wait, no, no, no. That is your style. Never mind. Hey, no, never mind. It just ig just ignore all that. So you saw this at the Perot <laughs> Museum, and that inspired you to make this piece. Yeah, here. I took a lot of pictures there because I really like the idea of drawing crystals. And sometimes they're really tough and they're tricky because there's a lot of small nuances and like lots of little intricate shading. Um, can Can I ask uh, what what? causes that effect that's on the back the background so it's not black but it's got like smudges everywhere it's graphite it's, graphite. it's all graphite uh -huh. yeah so um the, it just i use a a softer graphite pencil to try to fill in all like so that's all pencil mm -hmm. and my hand isn't in there but it's a good like i want to say 16 to 18 inches from top to bottom okay so it's a really big piece like yeah. it, it's a good size piece. Well, it do, it does look really like a big, lot of really effort in that. What I do. Yeah. Um, there, it, I will warn anyone who is interested in this one. There was a little bit of water damage on one of the on the left side there, and so I intend to trim that off. But I wanted to get a good photo of the whole piece altogether first, um, and also because I forgot to trim it when I was at uh, Josh's place using his scanner. And gotcha. His, um, uh, one of the the tag team Dragon Ball Z World Champions Retrospect Radio, thank you for providing the music, uh, points out that Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z is green and purple. Yeah, those are like my, that's one of my favorite color schemes. I'm gonna dye my roots purple. Oh, some chains. Yeah, everything in this picture was sold. Can you believe it? Yes, I can believe it. I sold all the things! Well, I feel so cool. You are a clearly a talented artist that, uh, what's your, what's your following? Like, is it, is it a massive following? No, not at all, actually. Like, I've spent the last several years uh, building my following up, and honestly, I've definitely spent the last six months trying to go from uh, 450 to 500 followers. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, um, I don't have a massive following. Like, if I'm lucky, I'll get like 30 or 40 likes on a photo, and that's that's really enough for me. Like, just having people like look at it is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm inspiring other artists out there, like I follow a lot of artists on Instagram, uh, and so if I have other artists who are following me that are getting that same kind of benefit, then I feel like I'm out there doing what I'm supposed to do, because I feel like art to me is whatever you draw. Or it's whatever you create, and as long as it invokes an emotion, like whatever kind of emotion you get is whatever you pick up off of it. But I want to feel something. And well, everything that I, I put into it, I feel like I at least mastered that. Well, let me help you. There's a follow. Gratefully following. Oh, no! What? Thank what? you! What did I do? I didn't do anything. No, I, I actually feel your pain there. I feel like... Uh, what we've been doing on the streams and what we're doing at free play has gotten some attention in some places but like you know this level of art that clearly sells like that even with a with a, an audience of like 400 or so um it, it it shows you how like this is really quality stuff and it does not surprise me that it all sold and i don't like it, it, it's so frustrating that like it's it's hard to get the word out that like you know Look at your look. Look here. Look at here at the quality that just gets snapped away, and like you, you should be paying attention to artists of this quality. And um, and I don't know I, I want to expand both of our audiences, frankly. Um, not even for my sake, but you know, for for the sake of the community, because clearly, 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 um, the.
the talent here is so much better than the idiot sitting in the middle. I don't know. I feel like you're pretty cool. Well, uh, if you can believe it, that one I drew on the bottom right, I did in high school. Oh, wait, I'll go back real quick. Yeah, the sorry. one with the, yeah, that was the one that actually caught my eye instantly too with yeah, the chains yeah, and the heart. Yeah, you said something and I wanted to, yeah, I drew that in, in high school. Wow. I want to say my sophomore year. You were always too cool for me. Yeah. No. All right. What we got here? Uh, those are just like some random gel pen sketches that I drew. I like to draw... Like, the Hago faces are a lot of fun for me just because there's a lot of facial expressions that go into them. And those I literally drew on the floor of my bedroom. Didn't, like, I didn't even take 20 minutes on each of them. Um, but I have all this Okay, so you're telling me this is a rush job for you? That's... You, yeah, you understand I could I literally draw for six straight months as much as I've been streaming here and I still would not get anything approaching that quality. I don't think that's true at all. I feel like all art is, is just putting in the practice. It's like how you got good at, at fighting games. Well, maybe not you, because you're a natural. But like other people who are human, you know, like... All right, all right. They have, to, they have to put hours in. They have to practice. They have to fight other people. They've got to look at what other people do and get, get advice um, from other players whom they respect and are better than them. Like, it's not like they were just good right off the bat, except for like the very small handful of people that I've heard are just like good at any game they try and good for them um that's great but like i said all us normal people have to put in like time and effort and that's all art is like i've been putting in this time and effort since i was like since i can pick up a pen um and i still like sometimes it's really disheartening to see other people who haven't been working on it as hard and they to me the, their quality of art is better but i really shouldn't sell myself short for all the progress that i've made I, I think I think it's all stunning, and and point taken on the the fighting games and and being able to, to teach yourself, uh, it, it actually does take a lot of effort on my hand my part as well. So, well, you make it look so easy. Yeah, and the you making it look easy too. All you gotta do is hit a button. And there's another like fascinating art piece with a completely different style, um, and and different like printing methods. It's incredible. All right, so what do we have here? Thank is this you. a heart gem yeah these are uh, more mono prints it's a uh, it's supposed to be a heart-shaped perfume bottle oh yes, uh, yes with some peonies and these are really fun this uh incorporates the left one is the original and the second one on the right is that ghost print that we talked about before so i did the the one on the left was the first run through the press and then the one on the right i took another piece of paper and i ran that plate through the press again and some of the ink transferred onto it but then i did and in this stage after you run it through the press if you go back and add ink to it after the fact that's called hand touching so i went back and i uh, i hand touched hand touched it with a, a brush pen um the pentel pocket brush pen i'm gonna go ahead and just throw that out there it's probably my most favorite tool in my arsenal it is so easy to use like it takes some practice uh, but as long as you you realize that you're supposed to be using it like a brush instead of using it like a pen, it turns out really well. It's it's good for doing stuff really quickly, and I've been having a lot of fun practicing with it. So I used that to outline the ghost print on the right, and then I, I went also in with a white gel pen to give it a little bit more, uh, to let it pop a little bit more. Well, um, both of those, like I said, are one of a kind and can't be reproduced because uh, it was an additive monoprint where I painted onto the plate and I run it through the press and then I washed it off and it's gone. And this brings us to the interactive portion of our program. Five Hall of Fame points to the first person who can correctly spell in the chat peonies. Do I count? Am I in the chat? I don't know. I am in the chat, but I don't think I count. I'll wait. Do, 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 what do, do we do, have do, here? Do, do. Oh, man. It's a type of flower. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Retrospect radio. You get points for trying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you'll have to tell me if one of them gets it right because I definitely don't know. I hear uh, from... Uncle Yosh got it. Uh, sources are telling me it's Neverland. a type of flower. It is. So apparently Uncle Yoshi is the winner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He got, so, he some some people are getting further apart. All right, so what do we got here? 
<laughs> this looks like a garbage pail kids creation. I know, I recognize. Yeah, I like her a lot. I recognize this snotty font. Oh really? Yes. Did you ever see the garbage uh, pail kids? Uh, I I think is that a real thing? Cause yes. I saw it on um. Uh, oh no. Uh uh creepy co is uh, something that I follow on Instagram, and I've seen the Garbage Pail Kids there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a, uh, a series of trading cards. That's what I knew it of. They, they made a movie oh, out of it as well. I thought they were making fun of Cabbage Patch Kids. They were. However, they were making fun of them to the tune of an actual, like, collectible card series. And yes, as everybody's chiming in now, that when, we, when us ancient people were in elementary school, uh, we had the Garbage Pail Kids trading cards, and it would always be, like, fake cabbage patch kids with uh you know kind of like your gnarly creation here uh just mm -hmm. sort of a combination of the two uh, a lot of times there would be you know some sort of uh, uh bodily fluids involved and uh and you would flip the cards over on the other side you would have like a bigger picture that you could only mm -hmm. assemble mm -hmm. if you put all the different cards that you collected together uh and then like for some the reason they made a movie out of that so go figure all right oh man that's too funny. No, I, I thought that that was, like, a parody, and I didn't know that there was more attached to it, so now I feel very informed. Thank you. Yeah, it's like um, it's like a fever dream that we lived through somehow. So see, for me, I just really like the pastel gore aesthetic. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, the whole cutesy vibe. But like, again, there's, like, the guts and, like, insects falling out, uh, and she's, like, a zombie demon, which is why she's half green and half pink. Um, but you can't really see all the little stitches in her face, unfortunately, from here. That was my bad. I should have taken individual photos, but I didn't think I about mean, it until just now. Maybe I can expand it, maybe, if you want me to try. Let's see. Mm -hmm. See how far... Uh, but everything on this page is also sold except for the one on the top right corner. And the top right corner uh, has a lot of meaning to me because I have really bad insomnia. Uh, and so sometimes I really have a hard time sleeping. Um, and so all the different things that you see, so what she's holding in her hand, I don't think anyone can tell, but it's a prescription bottle. Okay. And all of the things coming out of it are different, uh, lyrics or melodies or a couple, one of them is album art, uh, from songs, uh, that have to do with sleeplessness. Um, uh, so there's one song called Ambien by Without a Face. Uh, which is one of my favorite bands, honestly. The Their second album, the first album was better, is uh, one of my favorite albums. Um, and so that's kind of what gave me the idea for this. Mm -hmm. And so one of those is just the lyrics to that song. Um, one of them is uh, music from uh, an Undertale song, actually, that is just like, it's a music box tune that's very sweet and melodic. Um, so yeah. I need I need to play more Undertale. Uh, is it this? Sorry, this one's already sold. But what what kind of creature is this? The four armed one? Is that a bee? Oh oh, she's a, a lacy butterfly baby. Nice. Very nice. Very very nice. Thank I, you. I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I did the the lace with just gel pen, and so I was really worried that it was gonna turn out like really muddled and and messy, but I think it turned out really well. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this, thank yeah, you. It looks fantastic. What do we got here? Oh, these are the hearts. I think we've seen this picture before. Or a uh, similar one. It's not one. quite the same picture, because this has the um, the very first run that I did through the press, the bottom right. Mm -hmm. uh, the top one, which is the proof after it was, like, I, I finally got it all whittled away to how I liked it. And then the bottom left is just uh, one of the proofs where I was practicing doing the sheen collet technique. Uh, and you can see it's a little bit muddled because the paper was a little bit too wet when I ran it through the press. But it's still a really clean design and it still looks really good and it's still uh, just an option that I wanted people to have available to them if they thought that the, uh, the limited edition, or the variant edition, was too much. This is just like a cheaper option of that. Okay. I think we only have one more picture. Unless I started with this one. There we go. Ooh, I love that one. So what do we uh, have here? 
Uh, so those are just um, a couple more that I that I really liked, and I valued the little witch that I have down there a little bit higher than the other small uh, ink with color pictures that I did, just because I put a lot more effort into that one, and I used uh, I went back over it with gel pen and gold gel pen um, to really make it pop. Um, I also really love her cute little witch face, um, and then the watercolor. Uh, again, using those really vibrant colors, uh, not quite as expensive as the larger watercolor pieces. Um, and then that other, the little bee, you can kind of barely see it there, but it is the little, uh, if you remember the other bee picture that I had, that's a ghost print from that plate of just the bee. That it's, once again, all looking amazing. This, this one looks like it could be a, a character from a game right here. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, for sure. It looks, I looks... wanted to make um, a fighting game. I had a fighting game idea where all of the characters were just different uh, cat girl tropes. Hmm. Like Miko tropes. And then I had a bunch. I had one that was just like a bunch of punk girls fighting. And I was like, no, I would play that. Man. And really, also, I wasn't really interested in making a game. I was just interested in, interested in designing the characters. May, may I ask the significance of the choker? Because I, I see you wearing it, this style of choker all the time as well. Oh, yeah. I'm bringing it back. Like, it was super popular in the 90s, and then the early 2000s, it kind of died off mm -hmm. around, like, 2010. And I've just been wearing it for forever. And I, um, and I have seen it in, on more than just you, so I guess you're succeeding in bringing it back. Yes. Yeah. Um... Yeah, but I don't know. It's just I personally feel like, okay, this is gonna sound really weird, and I, I I'm almost uh, I'm almost hesitant to say it on chat. But one of my best friends growing up said that my neck is very stranglable. Like it looks very fragile, and like you could put your hands around it and just squeeze, and then I would die. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of how that works. That that is accurate, <laughs> I guess, but morbid. So, I mean, my yeah, my neck would be like, strangleable so now, as well. Yeah, right? Like, it's a neck. Any neck is strangleable if you have two hands. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Hercules yeah, yeah. Hercules may have had a, 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 a ill-fated encounter with, like, everything, including his own family. So, yes, everything's strangleable. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Uncle Yosh wants to know how long they've been in prison now. Hmm? Oh, what? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> she... She didn't do anything. It's just a, a an observation that she stated, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know. Like I just feel like my neck looks very bare without mm -hmm. having something there. So like I I feel like I I just so I used to have uh I my safety blanket was wearing a necklace or not a necklace but it was, it's now it's wearing a necklace. Before it was wearing a sweater. Like I always had to have a sweater on. I always had to have a jacket on. And then I always had to have a hat on. Like my hat, my head could not be bare. I had to have something on my head covering me up. Uh, and now it's like, now I just feel like I need something around my neck because I just feel very naked without it. Gotcha. If that makes sense. You know, I, 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 I'm curious. I just have a question for you, and, and and feel free to not answer if it's too personal. But like, you're you're one of the more um, you you have an interesting and an attractive uh, look to you, and I, when I say attractive, I don't mean like um, like in a way it's traditionally put. Like like you're you're visually pop in a way that's unique to you, and um, and everybody who sees you sort of remembers and recognizes you uh, day in and day out. Like how much of of your appearance and 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 just an artistic like flair do you do you attribute to that? Is there any relation or? Like, oh, are you, gosh. are you your Honestly, own canvas? when I was younger, yes, yes, that's, that's kind of how I feel at this point. Like, I've, I was so hesitant to put color on my face for the longest time. And, like, mm -hmm. I didn't even start putting on makeup seriously until after I was out of high school. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, like, but once I got my first color palette and I put it on my eye, I hated it. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, that looks so weird. Like, that does not even look like me. Right. But then, like, the more I did it, the more fun I had with it, the the better I felt like I was getting at it, the more I wanted to do it. And now it's just like, well, here I am. Like, it, it's really strange. You wouldn't expect me to, like, I don't like being stared at. I don't like being the center of attention. Um, it makes me really uncomfortable. It makes me kind of nervous because I'll just take my foot and stick it directly into my mouth. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. But, we, we we roll with similar numbers behind the bar, but like the mm -hmm. uh, 
the just just your the uniqueness of your appearance always is striking because I remember the first three times I saw you, you looked entirely different, and that's uh, uh, post Alamo days. I, I don't know how many times I saw you just in passing as as the random person working there, but um, certainly I when you were not only would you do look completely person. What's that? I so said I'm a multifaceted uh, person as far as like the way that I can do my makeup. Yeah. Yeah, no, and you look completely different. Even because the first three times I saw you were also in three different locations. I saw you in Arlington and in and, and, and Richardson, and it's just like wildly mm -hmm. different. I remember the one, the the last one in Richardson. You had the cow, the cow onesie mm -hmm. on. And I was just like, what? Mm -hmm. That was too fun. Um. All right. Well, thank you so very much for joining us. Uh, thank very... you so much for having me. I am so glad that I had a chance to talk to everybody about this and explain some of this. I hope that it was informative to some people who were interested. Um, I hope that everyone enjoyed uh, the stuff that I had posted up. And thank you so much for tuning in and just hearing me ramble on about nothing. I, I enjoy it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I have Imran Acosta from Texas Gamers Lounge coming up. And um, I, 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 I kind of need a break. I don't know how to like, that's, that's, that's sort of the thing that I haven't been able to figure out while while streaming from noon till 10 p.m. every single day is like occasionally the fact that I'm a human sort of comes into the the sunlight. Okay, on on that that tip, retrospect radio. I did go out on a walk as I was Angela. Ask, did you take your daily walk today? I did 10 a.m. and I posted it and I walked around the block uh, just as proud of you. Dr. Beard suggested yesterday. She said that we should all be accountable to each other in a community, and I was like. I know a community. I'll post it. I'm walking. Um, so it was, and I, and I managed to stay productive too. I grabbed grabbed the phone and booked a few more shows for later on. But yeah, so uh, that's Car awesome. Yeah, Carissa, why don't um, I leave the show for you? Uh, we'll see if somebody else can come on and and if anybody has questions that they would like to audibly ask, you can answer them. But also go ahead and plug all the ways in which they can contact you and find all this excellent art we've been enjoying along with you while I take a bathroom break. Be back. Yeah, sounds good. You go right ahead. I'm going to put up my email. Um, doo -doo. And if you guys can hear my clicky keyboard. If you guys have any other um, questions uh, or inquiries about anything, do, 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 do. Yes, I've been the center of attention for 90 minutes, and that is why I rambled so much. Like, I have a really hard time figuring out a good stopping point. <laughs> um, yes, perfect. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Hey, how's it yeah, going? You can most certainly make. Hey, how's it going? Uh, in the art group, yes, you can definitely make pictures of Delph. In fact, it is encouraged. Make make more Delph some Delphs. Delph some Delphs. Delph some. Delph some. Oh, Delph some. I heard Delph some, and I'm like, wait, what? It's Delph some now. Oh, yeah, uh, so... but how's it going? How you been? Uh, lazy, useless. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> what can I say? Socially isolating oh. myself, uh, wait, no, distancing myself from everyone, so, hooray. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, if we want a picture of uh, Dalsum Delp or Delpsum, um, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen one made already uh, that was amazing. Uh, that Josh did, I think it was from last year? Oh my. And yeah, and I saw it for the first time, and I was like, man, it looks just like him. Like, that's his face for sure. Um, the first piece of art that I saw that inspired me to be an artist. Um, honestly, if I'm being honest, the first time that I saw a piece of art that made me ambitious to be an artist, I was 12 years old. I uh, was introduced to a webcomic by my best friend. Um, and it's called Dominic Deegan Oracle for Hire. And the first, like, I think I read it in like 2012 and it started in like 2018 and I binged like all four of the years 
that it was uh, that it was still up because I believe it was still running at the time that I started reading it. Um, and I read years worth of comic in one night. Like I stayed up all night binging it. And um, this this person posted every weekday for years, and I just could not get enough of it. And so. Um, once when I was reading it, I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to make a webcomic and I want to inspire other artists and I want to tell a story. And um, it, was a, it was the first time that I really like had a sense of purpose with my art uh, besides taking Hallmark out of business. That came a little bit later. <laughs> have you ever made a webcomic? Uh, I have not actually made one. I've started a few, honestly. Like I've, I've come up with different ideas. I have a whole page of ideas. At one point I got so many ideas to write web comics that weren't going anywhere that I wanted to write a web comic about someone trying to figure out what web comic they wanted to write about. That's that's very fourth wall of you. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um but yeah, I wanted to write a web comic about working at free play, like a little slice of life thing. Oh, man. Um wanted to do uh you apparently have a project about my life which is going to be really creepy when you send it to me not even on purpose it wasn't even on purpose but apparently i was writing a story about your life on accident wow when did when did you come up with that uh was it before uh, or after you met me oh it was definitely before okay. okay it was definitely before because i would i would joke about it with my friends i told them that i was going to start a cult but not on purpose mm -hmm. which uh, is my life yeah yeah, it was it was weird. It was weird when oh, I realized I had a cult. It's the picture of Delp as as Delpsome. Oh. And I feel like that actually would be perfect as though we'll be right back after these messages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the no breaks means no uh, no stopping. Oh, the dog's back. One of the five. Oh yeah. Five dogs. Yeah, they're out there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How's it going, Chris? Pretty good, pretty good. We've just been enjoying Carissa's art show, and she had way more in her bag than I thought. I have nothing in my bag. She had so much.